how to make money at school as a kid. I love this topic because there are so many ways and creative ways that you can do it. Again, we're just not taught to think like this. We're just taught to like go to school, do your classes, do your homework, go back to school and just kind of rotate. What that's conditioning you to do is become an employee and get a job and disconnect your personal life from this life that's gonna make you some money. So why not be an entrepreneur and learn young? So the three things I wanna talk about is how do you identify and leverage some of your skills at school? Because again, this whole topic is about how do you make money at school and with people in your school? Number two, how do you set the right prices for your services? And number three, how do you avoid the common mistakes that most people make, especially when they make a lot of money and spend too much money and then you end up in debt or you owe other people. So we're gonna avoid that at all costs. And I have some great softwares I'm gonna give you at the end. So stay tuned to the end because you're gonna want these softwares to help track and monitor your behavior as you move into this conversation of how do you make money at school? So the first thing is how do you leverage your skills? So again, what are you good at, right? So my kids have both been tutors before. Are you a good writer? You could help people write. I mean, if you actually break down tutoring, you could put it in any category. Kids that are musically inclined, there's very, very little music offered in the schools. If you are art inclined, if you um, know math really well, if you're good at sports. I know teenage kids that actually do sports training, strength training, speed training, flexibility training. I have some teenagers that teach yoga classes. So what are you good at? And then I'm going to go somewhere else. What do most of the teachers and parents have at school? Kids. So the other thing that my daughter's done is she's gotten babysitting jobs with her teachers. So she's got actually nanny jobs with her teachers. So she will uh, go to their house as they can go out for a dinner. So she suggests that that happens. I have other kids that have actually done some food prep right? Because people are busy. So if you love to cook and you're really good at it, you could do some food prep. You could also walk dogs. I mean, again, you're shopping in school for where you're going to get a market for people that could pay you for what you're doing. So now let's go to pay. So I'm a huge fan of pay into the market. So you don't want to be just the cheap person because you're the kid. And I think so many kids and parents endorse, well, you're young, so you get, you know, eight bucks or 10 bucks. If they can perform at a level of a 20, 30 and 40 year old and they can do the same kind of tutoring, same kind of training, same kind of writing, same kind of whatever they're doing, then price to the market, right? Nannies make between minimum 15, sometimes 20 up to 30, 35 bucks an hour. And I've seen this with my daughter, Tristan, is if she's just watching kids, that's one thing. But if they have a bunch of animals and now they got to manage the animals and take them out. And if they want you to clean the house, that's more of a nannying role than actually just babysitting kids. So then you price accordingly to the number of kids and the number of tasks that they're wanting you to do. So I always say price fair, the price a little high because people that know your quality, as long as you provide great quality, are going to love it. Now, I wanna talk a little bit to your parents because how can you make this money without having to pay tax? Well, you can make up to $12,550, no matter where you are, as a teenager. Now, at 18, you're a legal adult and you need to start paying taxes and start getting in the system. But your parents could get incorporated and add you to the company and now you run a company together. Then when you're 18, you take over the company. That's what I did with my kids. So now you've got 5, 10, 15 years years of financial history of a company that you actually did the work for, your parent legally had to own it. But then when you're 18, you get a corporate credit card, you get a corporate bank account, you got years of financial history, which means you're gonna get good credit and access to a lot of capital. I know it works because I've done it for my kids and I've done it for hundreds of thousands of kids across the country when they're parents. So before I go to the third point, I want you to subscribe to my channel. I want you here five days a week. I want you to share it with at least five or 10 other friends and get your family involved in this conversation. Get a learn journal together. In fact, I think every person in the family should have a learning journal because it actually records what video you watched. What are you all learning about it? Because what I learn and hear out of one video might be different than what you're learning and hearing. So you want to have those conversations at the dinner table or at breakfast. Like, what are you learning? Keep the money and business conversation in the family. So it's an opportunity because that's really where money's made. I mean, what we're really taught is if you need money, you get a job. If you need more money, get a second job. No, become an entrepreneur. Start to do hustles so you actually know how to make your own money. And you can run up that revenue as much as you want per month, or you can take it down if you're involved in a lot of activities, but you're in control and you're in command. The third point is how do you actually have some responsibility so you avoid any costly errors? So I have a rule in our house that all money made up until 18 years old, 50% goes to investing. So I'm gonna give you a link to iFlip, which is a very awesome software that can actually put your money into the market. It takes it in and out of the market. It's the safest way to be in the market. It's not robotic trading, but it's close. And we kick Robinhood's rear in every NASDAQ 
award. Um, and we're one of the fastest growing fintech companies in the country. And then that way you actually make money and put it away. So regardless if your parents did that corporate account or not, I do want you to have a separate bank account. I want you to be responsible for the money coming in. And if you do need to buy materials and have some costs associated to it, say you need some tutoring materials or different kind of technology you know, materials, you want to actually start looking at your profit. So that means how much did you make? What did it cost to actually fulfill it? and what's left is your margin. So you wanna start really looking at how much are you really making minus the cost. And if you had to drive somewhere, you gotta take your gas costs out of there, right? So what did you really make? I want you to start really looking at that so you start paying attention to the real details. So you're not just looking at top line, oh, I made 20 bucks or I made 50 bucks doing that task. I made 50, I kept 40, right? Or I made 50, I kept 25. So start paying attention to that and keep your money in a separate account just for the business that you wanna run and treat it like a business. Now your parents might think you're crazy and again, share this channel with them because they should be out here. They should be supporting you in your journey, how to make money as a kid, as a teenager, whether it's a school or it's just around your community. If you have any questions at any point, go to askglobal.com, ask questions, make a request. We would love to help support you in becoming a great entrepreneur and a very early millionaire.